Hello and welcome to this special show from Hyderabad as the battle for Telangana and the battle for Hyderabad hits its peak in the last stages. We sidestep the political slugfest to try and understand the Hyderabadi spirit and the defining themes in Hyderabad. And in that exercise with me is my colleague Uma Sudhir who knows Hyderabad, dare I say, like the back of her hand. Uma, is there a defining theme for Hyderabad in these elections? Okay, for the longest time Hyderabad you thought was Charminar city and then high tech city we say but now we have created our own new landmarks. There could be controversy around it. One is that Telangana secretariat uh, which of course people beautiful criticize. Building, huh? Beautiful building, very uh, stunning and very very uh, place for selfies. Uh. This is the place for selfies. So who is going to occupy that office? That's what this election is all about. Of course, people are going to criticize about the amount of money spent there, why was the old uh, secretariat demolished. But I must also say when we were bifurcating, the other state now, which doesn't have a secretariat, very jealous of us. Behind us is the Martyrs Memorial. If our camera could just pan and show, that's also Telangana Martyrs Memorial, which of course again is something which is very defining for us, Ambedkar statue. So these are all politically... Ah. Very significant, there iconic is a symbolic, symbols. iconic symbols and uh, I will stop there with the politics of it. Uh, yes. You stop there with the politics but I know you are a vegetarian, I am not going to ask you to decode the Hyderabadi biryani hence but the double ka meter is as interesting Uma. Absolutely and uh, Hyderabadi biryani we still host Hyderabadi biryani for whoever is coming down, okay. journalists, uh. politicians from neighbouring state uh. as well as others but Yes, double kamita is great. And then there are very typical Telangana cuisine as well, which uh, Pachi Pulusu, Garalu, all that is something that people will enjoy Pachi here. Pachi Pulusu and Garalu and along with Uma, I have a fascinating bunch of Hyderabad residents here with me. Let me start first with Shaista Bhatt, who has travelled around India. You've lived in every city and now you've made Hyderabad your home in the last two years. Is there a defining feature of Hyderabad, something that stands out for this city when you compare it with other cities? Uh, yes, I think uh, the fact that the old school charm still exists and we have the new world well defined here creates opportunities for everyone. That works for me. And the weather is lovely. And the weather is lovely, but we are sitting in December, so the weather, November, end December, the weather is great, but in summers it's very hot. Having lived in cities where humidity is very high, having lived in cities where it can get scorching hot, I think it's still a good bargain for me. It's still a good bargain. Only two months is bad. The rest of it, we are fantastic in weather, beats Bengaluru where you come from, hands down. Well, Bengaluru where I come from, we also have Uday Krishna who is an environmental activist here. Uday, a lot of us in Bengaluru, you know, a lot of the activists in Bengaluru, they say that, you know, there is only lip service given to this kind of issues. It never dominates the political or the social discourse. No, I don't think that's the case in Hyderabad. Uh, we've been active since last 12 years in Hyderabad, uh, working with the government departments, filling in uh, the bridge, I, I would say. So we've been seeing the development, at the same time we've been doing our work hand in hand with the government uh, departments. And so I think Hyderabad states, is different. which has been able to show better green cover, really significantly better green cover, we are getting our tigers back too. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, has there been a, you know, sust a substantial progress in terms of work here? There is. The tiger numbers have gone up in Telangana. Uh, we have a tiger reserve, Kaval Tiger Reserve, it's about 2000 square kilometers, uh, huge potential. And I'm sure down the line it's going to be one of the biggest tiger reserves in India. And in terms of citizen consciousness on these issues, uh, is there a defining spirit? Uh, is there something that Hyderabad can showcase, which is perhaps an example for the other cities? Urban apathy is not just related to voting, often it's to these issues as well. If you see back, actually Hyderabadis are everywhere, traveling point of view. And wildlife, Hyderabadis are in every jungle across the country. We are the wildlife tourists actually. And now we have our own tiger reserve. I'm sure it's going to be built, I mean, uh, developed on the lines with the other uh, neighboring states. Okay. So we will be right up there. Sometimes, Uma, I feel that the fascinating story of Hyderabad never gets told. It's often restricted to certain other issues, but, you know, the citizenry, the activism that happens here is often, often doesn't get told. Actually, they're very good hosts and uh, Hyderabad is a city that has welcomed everyone very nicely. People from all parts of the country I've seen have come here and then said this is beautiful, this is so welcoming, it's progressive, it has tradition, it gives you a mix of so many different things. I myself came here about 25 years ago and uh, I thought I'm here for a year or so but no, I became a Hyderabadi. You become a Hyderabadi, one who was born a Hyderabadi, Masyuddin Ahmed, who is uh, very uh, uh, involved with the Hyderabad Literature Festival, part of the organizing thing. Sir, what do you think defines the socio-economic ethos? The city has gone through 
a tumultuous time, if I may say so, in the last 10 years after the division of the state. Correct. Yeah, Hyderabad is like a melting point, or melting pot. So, the, as Omar has just said, the people who come from all over the country, from different uh, parts of uh, different states of and religion and caste and creed, and they, they hear, stay here for a few months and they decide to stay back. They, in fact, our uh, cultural harmony is so good that if you have noticed recently there was a, a Ganesh uh, procession which coincided with Miladun Nabi and uh, Muslims unilaterally decided to do Miladun Nabi uh, uh, two days later on a Sunday. So these sort of things have evolved. Now people who come here also get into this thing. So it's something like biryani, bagara baigan and gandhi pet ka pani. Achha, biryani, bangana bengan and gandhi pet ka pani. Those people, I said, those who drink that gandhi pet ka pani will always stay back here. Achha, are, what is the defining feature? This is the defining feature of Hyderabad? It is generally because people here are warm and uh, welcoming and they adopt everybody. Mm. So that's a very, very uh, big thing. In the last 20 years, 20 years, I haven't seen any uh, major incident taking place. Mm. There are a lot of uh, women's safety. Mm. I, there are times uh, once in a while, it's not very often with me, but once in a while when I come very late in the night, I see uh, ladies uh, going on two-wheelers. Mm. That, that's the biggest uh, factor that uh, if a girl can consider it to be safe enough to mm. move around at that part of the night, mm. we are quite safe. Right. And I can see this from last 20 years. Right, right. Maybe there's slightly more than that, but uh, our police is doing an excellent job. Many so young girls actually make this place their home. I mean, they come from everywhere and make this their home. And I have I've seen girls actually travel from high-tech city to Charmira in the middle of the night to have a chai just in front of, you know, the, the Irani chai we talk about. In the middle of the night, they can go there and have chai and come back and... Uh, you safe. know, the Irani chai is fantastic here. In fact, I thought we should get you all a cup of Irani chai, but the shops have not opened up in the morning. It's a late morning city. Huh? You can, uh, we are having the Hyderabadi kind of a lifestyle, which is Nizami, we say, or whatever it is. Yeah. But still, not that we are missing out on progress. We have that phase too, but yes, we are relaxed. We are only missing out on Irani chai at the <laughs> moment. And I have also with me Hima Bindu, who works uh, on social issues here. Hima, when the Hyderabad story is told, What's perhaps the most uh, pertinent aspect of it or perhaps if there is one, a disturbing aspect of it for you? Um, the pertinent aspect of it, yes, when, when we just uh, say Hyderabad, the image that shows up is a Charminar or a high-tech city. I come from a Hyderabad which is called Kapra and not many know of that place. Uh, it is in the Upal constituency and I work in the Machel constituency for children. So that is not coming out enough and uh, I, I wish we are better represented and maybe children, the urban poor, the urban children are better represented in the city. You think there is a disparity? You think there are two stories of Hyderabad and one story gets pre uh, precedence over the other? Absolutely. Uh, having born and brought up in Hyderabad, uh, I think, yeah, even when I used to go to college or work, I used to take three to four buses. It takes me three hours to come to this side of the city. Accessibility is still a question. Environment there, uh, lakes are vanishing. So these sort of things need to come out. I think these are the lesser represented voices. And these are, these are issues that every urban city faces. I certainly, uh, you know, would go with what uh, Himaiskar is telling us here because while we are very proud of the uh, imagery that your uh, you know high tech city hyderabad with its uh, uh, high rise buildings and people like to say this looks like manhattan and this looks like chicago we are also happy about what happens in the old city the history which is there the culture which is there but a large part of hyderabad does fall off the map for many people and that is something that is quite worrying and we in fact all of us are very active on social media hyderabadis are active on social media we very often say please talk about drainage here water issues there you know is say Sikandrabad, such a beautifully planned area and yet you don't have political representatives adequately able to represent it and their interests and that I think is a is a gap and something that uh, the governments have not been able to do for us in terms of uh, representation and voice for that area. Right, important points there and as we talk about imagery, I'm going to bring in a controversial aspect now which is a bit of comparison between two southern cities, Bengaluru which is the city that I hail from and Hyderabad which is a fascinating city here. In terms of numbers, uh, the population of Bengaluru is about 1.36 crores. 3, crores. 
whereas Hyderabad is 1.08 crores. Bengaluru has 110 billion US dollar GDP, Hyderabad about 83 billion dollars. Bengaluru has 40% of India's startups, Hyderabad has only 6% of India's startups. These graphics are playing out on your screens, but data is never never ever enough for a comparison between two cities it's an extreme emotional issue but in terms of perception and let me get Mysudin first uh, in terms of perception do you feel that Hyderabad may be lagging behind Bengaluru or, or as a Hyderabadi you say no no straight no because uh, you should the way it is developing here it's uh, uh, it'll be it'll not be long that we overtake uh, Bangalore you just pass through Omar will know this if you pass through the high tech city part, every two months the landscape changes there. A tall high rise building will come out and it will overshadow the other buildings. So you don't know where exactly you are going. Mm -hmm. So the way things are and because of no traffic congestion, mm -hmm. the happiness quotient of our people, uh -huh. okay, uh, and uh, the infrastructure that is provided, I think they are more coming in now okay. than who would go to Bangalore. So leave the numbers behind, look at the reality of life here, right? Would you agree you've lived in both cities? Yeah, well, uh, I think comparing Bangalore to Hyderabad may not be a very straightforward comparison because the starting point was not same. They did not start off at the same time. Having said so, the pace at which we've seen growth happen, uh, and I have been in the corporate sector, so I can tell you, the the very focused, concerted effort to go out and bring in investments and if you look at the FDI numbers, if they are flashing on the screen there, you would know that there is still a large gap to be covered. But there is an effort, it's visible, I've seen ministers, first time in my life, seeing going out, fetching business for the state, which is something that I haven't seen elsewhere. I think the other aspect we'll have to keep in mind is access to talent. And for any city, for, for the corporate world, and you will compare IT, but I feel like Hyderabad has a distinction because it's widely distributed in, in the catchment of healthcare, in pharma, pharma was always there. Uh, but I think now with the semiconductor space becoming big here, IT, ITS should not be the only comparison, which typically becomes the point of comparison. And I think looking at it, slightly disagree uh, people do tell me that uh, traffic is bad and I tell them from the cities I've lived in this is a, a breeze but happiness quotient to completely completely agree on it having said so I think the way the development is happening is at a at a scale which I don't know if it's sustainable for Hyderabad to stay happy it has to be sustainable I think the points around where are the lakes where is the drainage all of those aspects will become middle and center we saw the whole Neopolis uh, auction happen in a day, uh, 3,000 crores being raised has actually created a disequilibrium as far as access to housing is concerned. There is no mid-income housing, right? Uh, so it is Nawabi. So Nawabs have, I mean, there is a lot of old money here and therefore there is a lot of good housing available. But if you're going to attract more talent, where are those 1 BHK suites which are available for a migrant population that comes in, works and wants to for the long weekend go back home? So I think balance is what I would say is required as a center and focus. But you cannot take your eyes away from the fact that it is easier to do business here. And that stability and that access to information and ease of doing business is something that is attracting a lot of corporates to Hyderabad. Uh, but we have we didn't have the same starting point so we should keep that no not the same starting point to compare the startup equation of course numbers is only one side of the story right uma when we talk of indian cities we often talk in terms of gdp but not in terms of the real life each city has its own fascinating composition and its own fascinating sentiment that's attached to it i would say rivalry between Bengaluru and Hyderabad goes back a long time from the time when uh, Mr. Chandra Babu Naidu was chief minister here and SM Krishna there they have been doing this comparison Chesta is right but Bengaluru I must say has been an inspirational city for uh, Hyderabad in that sense <laughs> okay it's been an inspirational city for Hyderabad for sure because uh, what uh, Bengaluru did we, we were trying to match up all the time and get there but talent uh, uh, in terms of being able to attract talent we spoke about uh, you know climate there in Bengaluru has always been spoken of as something that people 
people like so, so umar i just want to i i spoke to a former bureaucrat in hyderabad that who said he went to chandrababu naidu and they were having a conversation and he asked uh, what is it that is extra in bengaluru that we don't have here and this bureaucrat said climate and i believe naidu said we will change the climate of hyderabad <laughs> <laughs> so that's how we have, that's a kind of proactive leaders that we have had and i think um, the citizenry also because we have the maximum number of engineering colleges uh, so talent is there we have those kind of institutions we have you know you have a triple it you have an iit you have a isb uh, yeah. all of them are going to be contributing to this new world where we are talking about artificial intelligence ds all the talent is there and therefore i am i'm very hopeful for the uh, city per se that it has its own momentum and it is going to uh, do well uh, you know already we are borrowing from karnataka in terms of leadership coming here inspiring us politically that's uh, one side i like one of those leaders said mr dk shukumar was just saying that they are actually sister cities let's see for them to both grow together both grow together but uh, in terms of the yardsticks that we use for assessing a city today and i and i'm asking this more not just from a hyderabad point of view across the board do you sometimes feel that our priority seems to be misplaced uh, we don't really see other yardsticks which need to be taken in when you say when you're saying is the city doing well or not yeah i think it's more it centric view that's being uh, projected but hyderabad has got much more than it we have a huge defense manufacturing sector in hyderabad and we have a huge pharma uh, industry in hyderabad i have been in the industry also i have been in the defense manufacturing so i know that part of it but again if you see the starting Vaccine point like of the country yeah of the world so, actually yeah of the world so but again if you see the starting point of obviously is uh, different between bangalore and hyderabad but one thing i would like to bring up here i mean i am from a school where even masiuddin uh, from the same school top 8 ceos are from our school from hyderabad it's only a matter of time it's so only bangalore should be <laughs> You know, we should be worried. We should be worried, and we are worried. We are worried. But Hima, in terms of priorities, in terms of yardsticks that we keep, often the conversation, at least in English language journalism, revolves around IT, IT capital, business, GDP. Right. So, like I said, I work in the urban slums of Jawahar Nagar, which hosts the city's largest dumping yard. It is 350 acres of land mass. So I think I would say education needs to be prioritized. Community schooling needs to be prioritized, just as residential schooling. And our yardsticks lie in how well a Anganwadi center is doing, and not a high-rise tower in high-tech city. So yes, that shift needs to happen. It's not just IT. That shift needs to happen, and it's not just for Hyderabad. It's across India, perhaps. That shift needs to happen. My final point is one of voter apathy, which is an urban issue across the board. is there a sense of voter apathy obviously the numbers reflect that there is a sense of voter apathy you just go to patancheru the uh, constituency your uh, uh, voter per- voting percentage goes up to 60 65% but here in the heart of the city it's around 40 42% yeah you, you i think you have taken this data from the lok sabha election last time yes so the assembly elections had a bigger uh, turnout here i agree to what you are saying because at best also i think i don't think we would have crossed 70% so in that scenario i urge every voter in the city in the state of telangana and in the country whenever the election happens please go out and vote it's too important it's our moral responsibility that we go and vote so okay it. and there is one question that i have asked you know in 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 corporate circles in in your social circles is politics a matter of conversation or no it is it's just sidestepped completely well i think it's impossible to keep it out but uh, it's uh, done in pockets of comfort you don't do it with everybody so it's uh, a it, very telling statement yes. yeah you know it is it is it is sort of telling of that urban sophistication right you don't really we want to talk about what's politically correct and may not want to really challenge things but the good part i think is that uh, now everyone has a voice the social media has been a big help of course that space also uh, frighteningly taken over by uh, uh, political parties and uh, interests and therefore that kind of a circulation happens but i think people do find that there are multiple platforms on which still you can have your voice and therefore you at least get to hear what's happening everywhere and what uh, she's pointing out the youngest uh, among us uh, that the priorities need to change and that's what the governments whether it's uh, chandra babu naidu's government or a ksr government will realize that it is beyond a hyderabad that right. those uh, decisions are being made those votes are being cast hopefully that as you listen to all this what's running through your mind no i think hyderabadis have been a bit lazy in voting i mean I'll, i won't disagree with that part of it but uh, 
uh, I feel the connect between the uh, elected representative and the voter is more in the rural areas where you know they get direct benefits of water and I think that needs to be um, probably you know uh, exposed more in the city where you know citizens how we benefit from uh, the uh, leaders or who are being voted that's missing so that's why people don't have that connect okay fine if I vote what's going to happen if I don't vote what's going to happen adding to that I think so the Prime Minister will be coming back to uh, Telangana and campaigning here while we also have uh, G BJP President JP Nadda, Mr. Amit Shah, all of them on campaign here. Yesterday they had a roadshow along with uh, Mr. Pavan Kalyan of the Janasena and uh, Congress leaders, leadership also here in Telangana. Congress leader Rahul Gandhi as well as Priyanka Gandhi are here and Rahul Gandhi in fact on Saturday evening met up with uh, student leaders here because uh, job and unemployment is one of the major issues that the Congress is uh, talking about because of the perception that the Telangana government has not been able to do adequately in terms of providing jobs to the youth here. So the Telangana State Public Service Commission uh, that has been uh, in the uh, news for the wrong reasons saying that they have been unable to conduct the exams. Uh, to be able to provide uh, jobs to uh, the youth in the government sector. That's something uh, that Rahul Gandhi has been speaking about and the Congress in its manifesto itself has put up a job calendar, giving dates and saying specifically how many jobs they would fill up within that period as well. So he was discussing the job calendar with those youth and yesterday in a public meeting that uh, Rahul Gandhi was addressing, he made a reference to the uh, uh, jobs that are being uh, uh, provided by the Congress once they are elected to power, making a contrast with the uh, BRS government saying that they had only managed to give jobs to their own family members and to their relatives and friends. Let's listen to what Rahul Gandhi said. मतलब अगर आप KCR के मित्र हैं, उसके परिवार के सदस्य हैं, तो आसानी से आप कोई भी एग्जाम पास कर सकते हो। मगर अगर आप तेलंगाना के युवा हो तो बिना पैसे दिए बिना रिश्वत दिए आप ना एग्जाम पास कर सकते हो ना आपको नौकरी मिल सकती है सो इट्स द BJP leadership on the one hand and the Congress leadership, national leaders coming in here but it is uh, BRS leaders are also going all out and they got a last minute advantage with a go ahead that was given by the election commission that said that they could disburse funds under the Raitu Bandhu scheme. Raitu Bandhu scheme is something under which the BRS government for the last 11 cropping seasons has been giving 5000 rupees per acre per farmer and the Congress had objected to it saying that it is going to influence voters but on the 24th of November the election commission gave a go ahead and BRS leaders have been telling uh, the villagers that from Tuesday yes uh, Saturday Sunday were week was the weekend and today is Karthik Pornima so not possible from tomorrow morning onwards their phones would start buzzing with the mon money that would be put into their bank accounts uh, as part of the Raitu Bandhu scheme about 60 lakh farmers are expected to benefit and the Congress is a little worried that that could influence the voters because this is exactly what happened in 2018 when people were going in to vote even at that time they were getting notifications on their phones saying that the right to bandhu amount has been credited into their accounts so let's listen in to what brs leader and finance minister mr harish rao said about the right to bandhu money coming into the accounts of farmers election commission keli right to bandhu paisa les coach and permission of chins यह लाजवारम, रेपे मो सोमवारम, कान रेप सोमवारे में मुंड नंटे कार्तिक का पौर नमी, जर रेप पूरे सेलेवे उन्नदी कार्तिक का पौर नमी, यह लाजवारम रेप कार्तिक का पौर नमी, ये लूंडी मंगलवारम पद्धुने मेरु चाय दाग तरो लेदो, मी फोन लो टिंग 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 नमोगत। 
Chief Minister K. Chandrasekhar Rao is hoping to score a hat-trick, get his party into power a third time, fighting 10 years of anti-incumbency. And he is in fact covering as many as 100 out of the 119 assembly constituencies in Telangana. Yesterday, in fact, uh, the Chief Minister in Jagtial said that he is not fighting for himself just to get a third term in office for himself. But he said he was doing because he wants to see Telangana as a 100% poverty free state and also 100% literacy state saying that he is not doing this for his own personal benefit or for his party to come back to power. This is the Congress of the Congress. 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 वो मोड़ी कहते हो लड़का तो मानक दौर का था आज ये पन मानन जाए लोग मानन चेले माँ पाजी समाज चलाने जी मेरी जुस्त नरु न्याय बद्धंगा धर्म बद्धंगा प्रजल पन लिए जन्म पैदल नाद कुन्नम अन्य वर्ग का लो पैदल नाद कुन्नम बुलम ले कुन्ना मतम ले कुन्ना तो मेरे देन लोग ने चोका कार्यफ्यू ले दू वो कारु That was Chief Minister KCR, in fact, in Banswada, where he had said that the Congress is using violence against the BRS and trying to get ahead in this election. And he had, in fact, said that uh, the BRS cadre, if they were given the same knives and, uh, you know, lattes and weapons, they would, uh, uh, they would leave the Congress in no state at all. This is a comment on which the Chief Minister has, in fact, received an advisory from the Election Commission asking him to stick to the model code of conduct. That's the wrap from Telangana for this uh, special focus on the Telangana Assembly elections. For now, it's back to Parmeshwar in Delhi. Uma, as always, thank you so much for that detailed update from Telangana. Um, voter apathy stems from privilege. So in the areas where I work in, everyone has a voter card and everyone is looking forward to vote. This voter apathy is more uh, seen in the urban, the upper middle class uh, areas. So I think, yes, uh, your vote actually changes the life of everyone, so please step out and vote. Please step out and vote is a message that the Election Commission is also giving. I'm coming to the end of the show, but I'm going to get final comments. What's your message to the rest of India from Hyderabad? Yeah, do come out and vote. Uh, and I also, if you permit me, since you have introduced me as member of HLF, yeah. HLF is <laughs> happening on 26th, 27th and 28th of uh, December, uh, sorry, January. In Salarpuriya Satwa, it's opposite the uh, In Orbit Mall. Okay, so please do come there also. Uh, yeah, do come out and vote and do come for oh, HLF is yes. the message. Final word. Hyderabad is lovely. You can make it your home. There's plenty of opportunity if you are uh, up for it, hardworking. And uh, I think it's a hidden gem. A lot of people don't know about it. And uh, I think I'm very happy being here. The hidden, uh, hidden gem, Hyderabad. Of the city, uh, of the country right now. Okay, the hidden gem of the country. I'll come to Uma last, but quick final from you? Uh, just come out and vote and I hope East Hyderabad and the children's voices are better represented post this election. Uh, Hyderabad is home. I can tell you that much. We have been bought in, uh, born and brought up in Hyderabad. This is one of the best places to live. Okay. People are very friendly. Food is amazing. The weather is good. Probably not as good as Bangalore but still it is good. Okay. The overall mix is really nice for someone to live in this place. Okay, I am not taking a side on the Bangalore versus Hyderabad battle as long as I am in Hyderabad. But Uma, your last comments, the defining feature, the defining theme, we started with that. Uh, and the final message from Hyderabad to the rest of India. I would say the final message is from here to our own voters saying that please find out who your candidates are, find out their profiles, find out their history, performance and then Tell everyone that they need to be accessible even after the election is over so that we can ask the questions and you are answerable to us. Please remember that this is actually the message to all the uh, people contesting here. We, you are on watch and we will give you our verdict on the 30th of November. And if you don't know, you can write to Uma. She knows every constituency. She knows every, uh, every candidate who is contesting here and the intricacies of politics. But that's all we have time for on this show. We'll keep a close track of the political battle for Telangana as it heads into the final showdown on the 30th of November. And then, of course, our continuing focus on what happens on the 3rd of December. Thanks for watching.